You want better sound for your Zoom or Microsoft Teams calls, or perhaps you're going to be a guest on a podcast and you want to get better sound, but you don't know the first thing about microphones? Let's get you up to speed. There are some fundamental things that you need to know, secrets, if you will, about using microphones that will really, really help you. <laughs> First one, if you want to get the best sound of your voice, get the microphone closer to you. The closer it is, then the more of your voice it's going to pick up and the less room sound or room noise it's going to pick up. So if you want to improve the overall quality of your sound, get the microphone up close. Secondly, using a directional microphone can help pick up more of your voice and again, less of the noise in your room. So you may have heard a term like cardioid, that refers to the directionality of a microphone. And all that really means is that a cardioid microphone is more sensitive on the front, it picks up more sound on the front, and it starts to fall off as you move around the side and it picks up almost no sound from the back. So having a directional microphone like that can help a lot too. Again, capturing more of your voice and less of the noise in the room. Third, in meetings or with podcasts, it really helps if you wear headphones or earbuds of some sort. And the reason for that is that if you play back the audio through your speakers, you know, listen to your fellow teammates via the speakers on your computer, the problem is that sound comes out of your speakers and goes into your microphone. And then what happens is that Zoom or Microsoft Teams says, hey, wait, something's happening here. I'm getting this audio twice. And so what it tries to do is prevent that from happening and it just degrades the quality of your audio. So if you really want the best audio quality, one thing you can really do to help is wear headphones or earbuds. Or if you're not gonna be talking a lot on a particular call and you're really disciplined about putting yourself on mute when you're not talking, you can probably get that to work. But if you want a really natural conversation, especially for a podcast, headphones are your best bet. You can use things that are more discreet, like earbuds. In this case, I'm using in-ear monitors. They're basically a fancy name for earbuds that are made specifically for performers or things like that. So that's going to help a lot. And then fourth, one thing you really need to kind of come to terms with is that microphones are not magical. They don't know which sound they're supposed to pick up and which sound they're not. So any sound waves that hit their capsule, that's the part where they're sensitive, it will pick that up. So you may think, oh, well, what about noise reduction? Isn't there sort of a smart microphone that can do things like that? And yes, there are things like that. And in fact, Zoom and Microsoft Teams try to do some noise reduction as well. And they do, in some cases, a pretty decent job. But when they do that, they almost always reduce the quality of your audio. So it's really important to understand that. Ideally, if you can, you want to turn off any sort of noise reduction or echo reduction things that you can, as long as you're using the other strategies we, we talked about before, using a directional microphone, working up close on your microphone, using your mute button when you're not talking, those things can all help. And then in Zoom in particular, if you turn on original sound, it's gonna turn all those other processors off and it's going to give you better audio quality overall. Okay, let's talk about the two major kinds of microphones that are available out there so that you have an understanding of what those are. The first are dynamic microphones. Now, these are generally a little bit less sensitive, so you have to work up a little bit closer to them. This microphone, for example, is a dynamic microphone. Now, you'll notice as I get a little farther away, it doesn't pick up nearly as much of me. Now I'm probably, oh, I would say approaching 70 centimeters, so less than a meter, uh, two and a half feet maybe. So with dynamic microphones, you need to be up pretty close on them. So you have to be kind of comfortable with that idea. The nice thing about dynamic microphones is because you do work up so close on them to get a nice strong signal of audio in there, you don't pick up nearly as much of the noise in your room. So if you've got fans, if you've got housemates out in the other room that are making noise, whatever the case may be, this is less likely to pick up that noise because you're working up nice and close on the microphone. So it's gonna pick up your voice and not a lot else. The second major type of microphones are condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are a little bit more sensitive, so you don't have to work up quite so close on them. What that means is you can work back a few, you know, a little bit more distance between you and the microphone. However, you should stay pretty close, again, if you want the best audio quality. If you back up, what's gonna happen is you're gonna pick up more room noise. Now, a condenser microphone can do that because it's more sensitive, but it will start to pick up more noise. So just be cognizant of the fact that Distance from your mouth to the microphone, 
makes a huge, huge difference. And so if you can stay up close on a microphone, like a condenser microphone as well, condenser microphones are often described as being a little bit more crisp sounding, maybe a little bit more sparkly. Uh, they definitely pick up higher frequencies a little bit better than dynamic microphones. So it's not really better than a dynamic microphone, but it is different. So if you want something that maybe sounds a little bit more natural, maybe a condenser microphone would be a better choice. If you want something that sounds rich and warm, a dynamic microphone might be a good choice. It really depends. You, of course, condenser microphones can sound rich as well. So if you want something that's crisper, condenser. And if you want something that is a little bit better, maybe at reducing overall room noise that gets picked up for your calls, a dynamic might be a better choice. Next up, let's talk about directionality or what's referred to as a polar pattern. And all this refers to is where a microphone is sensitive and where it is better at rejecting noise. So a directional microphone is going to pick up your voice better and reject sound that's coming from behind it. So that's a really important thing and a really great thing to understand so that you can choose a microphone that's gonna work best for your space. Now, there are two types of polar patterns that we're gonna talk about. Obviously, there are, there are more nuances than this, but just at a very high level. First are omnidirectional microphones. That means a microphone that picks up sound from all around it. Doesn't matter where the sound's coming from, it will pick it up. And these microphones don't generally work as well for meetings and podcasts, but you see them in use in a lot of other places. A lavalier microphone, in most cases, 99% of cases, is an omnidirectional microphone. Now, the reason that works pretty well in that case is because the microphone is right on your body, basically. You're wearing it here on your shirt or a lapel, and so it picks up a good bit of you, and so because it's so close to you, it will still pick up some room sound, but not a whole ton. The problem with lavalier microphones in the context of meetings and podcasts, though, is that, for example, if I'm sitting at a desk like I am right now, as I talk, my sa the sound of my voice goes out and it bounces off the desk and it bounces off my computer screen and it comes back to the microphone and it gets picked up again just a few milliseconds later. And that just sounds what a lot of people describe as echoey. Technically, it's reverb but doesn't sound very good. And so we generally try to avoid that. It's hard for people to listen to dialogue or spoken word audio that has a lot of reverb in it for a long period of time. So it's best if you can avoid that. That's why omnidirectional mics, not necessarily my first choice for meetings and podcasts. Now, there are also microphones with cardioid polar patterns or directional patterns. And what that means in practical terms is that the front side of the microphone is very sensitive. It should pick up everything basically in front of it. The pickup starts to fall off a little bit when you get to the side of the microphone. And when you get to the back, it picks up almost nothing. Let me demonstrate here. I'm going to pick up this microphone and I'm talking basically into the front of it right now. But you can hear as I turn it off to the side, you're going to hear a little bit less of it. And then as I turn it to the back and I talk into the back, you're really hearing very, very little of it. That is an example of a cardioid polar pattern or a cardioid directional pattern. So this can be really helpful for you because say, for example, you have a computer, maybe you have a gaming rig or <laughs> a really nice computer with a big fan in it, and it makes noise. You may not want to pick up that noise. And so if you aim the back of the microphone toward the source of that noise, that fan, it's going to pick up a lot less of that than if it was, say, for example, sitting right behind me. So you can use a polar pattern, a cardioid polar pattern to your advantage. Now, there are some nuances as well. Some microphones are referred to as supercardioid or hypercardioid. Those are just variations with a slightly different polar pattern. Generally, for meetings and podcasts, I would recommend a cardioid microphone. Okay, so let's demonstrate a couple of different microphones for you. First of all, a dynamic microphone and then a condenser microphone. Both of them have cardioid polar patterns and they both connect to your computer via USB. First, here's the Rode NT-USB Mini. It is a cardioid condenser microphone. And of course, it connects to your computer via USB. It comes with a very small desk stand, but you get the best sound if you get a taller stand that can get this up closer to your mouth. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you were quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Next is the Shure MV7. This is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. It connects to your computer via USB, but if you want to upgrade in the future, it also has an XLR output, the type of connection that most professional microphones use. 
notice that I need to be pretty close to this microphone. Often that results in the pickup of less room noise because you are working so close. This microphone does not come with a stand, so you'll need to buy a stand of some sort. In this case, I'm using a $25 microphone stand that sits on the desk. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Now, which of these microphones is going to be best for you? I think it's up to you. You really need to make that decision for yourself. And every voice is a little bit different, so every voice interacts with different microphones differently. But hopefully this gives you a sense for what might work in your particular case. If you have a noisy space where you're recording, I would probably recommend a dynamic microphone. If your space is not terribly noisy, it doesn't have a lot of reverberation where when you talk, the sound bounces off the wall and comes back to you. If you don't have a whole lot of that, then a condenser microphone might be a better choice because you might get a slightly more natural sound. Now, a couple of other things. If you want to hear a demonstration of a boom microphone, which we have not covered here, something that's above you outside of the frame, and a lavalier microphone and a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone all next to each other in this configuration, really sort of for meetings or for podcasts, I have another video that you can see up here to demonstrate that. And in a future episode, we'll talk about microphone stands. There's a whole variety of them, starting from $13 all the way up to hundreds of dollars, depending on what you want. We'll catch that in a future episode. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.